ok now we're going to go ahead and actually cut the holes here now before we talk a little bit about you know the supplies and everything you need but we weren't done yet ok number one a respirator of some kind ok because you're going to have all kinds of stuff kicking up and you're going to be gagging so like a N95 respirator would work or something like this like a real really good respirator you're going to need that also you're going to need safety goggles and because as you use the angle iron depending on how you're moving it stuff is going to be getting in your face and stuff and the insulation is everywhere so you're going to want to have some kind of eye protection for that not to mention the fact that there's going to be stuff moving everywhere so you don't want something sharp getting in your eye ok so we got our, we got our protection there now ultimately this is what you're going to be putting in to the wall I mean, that's what we chose yeah this is what we chose cellulose so uh, one of these can get you 40 square feet of uh, coverage so that gives you a good idea of you know how to calculate how much you're going to need what I did is I measured the walls measured the doors and windows subtracted you know the doors and windows and then came up with how much square footage I needed so you know that'll give you a good ballpark um, a lot of times you can try for what, what I think would be 25 or maybe 20 to 25 40 to 50 you know no 20 bags 25 bags 40 50 bags that should be enough to get a lot of coverage the project we're working on is 40 bags okay which is more than enough coverage for a pretty big house okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually go through and cut it I'm going to measure to the stud mark it angle iron it sawzall it out and cut the hole so from here you're going to see that to a hole okay so here we go We're measuring 16 on center. Right. And again, this is, you know, not exact because you're going to make a mistake and all that. So. And one thing with this house, or, you know, I don't have any cross studs here because I've done other parts of the house. So you can put your insulation at the top and it's going to come down. Now if you had the newer. a situation where you were going to put crown molding, you could actually put your holes higher up and then your molding could cover it up and you wouldn't even have to plaster over it. So it just depends. On some of the newer houses, they have all kinds of things and all that. So every house is going to be different so you know you got to consider that but for this I know that you know everything's been straight down again I may try this and it may not be so we'll see so I've just got marked off kind of around about where my stud is going to be so I'm going to want to play around over here I've got my square don't have to be exact there and I'll just mark this one I'm not going to cut this one but while I'm up there I might as well mark it because after this I got a bunch of other things to do so kill two birds with one stone there and you can see how <coughs> this is 16 and that so You'll have to play with it. You know, you'll have to. You'll cut a few holes that won't work, but so what? 
you cut another hole and move on with your life. You like moving on with your life. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now I got this. Now I'm going to, uh, I've, I've got my stud finder handy. <laughs> so, you know, if I want to really judge this, I can get cut one and find it and I can kind of know what I'm doing along a wall. So that's just a coat hanger. And you're using a coat hanger instead of a, ri a real stud finder because? Well, because everything in this wall is hard. And so the, stud, the new stud finders work on the premise of, you know, a drywall, the newer uh, construction. So when I take a regular, a new stud finder on this, I don't know what I'm going to get, you know, because it's always going to read a, something hard there. Mm -hmm. So it's easier, you know, these ends are going to be wood. We know that. So you can go 16 and there's going to be something here, here, or somewhere here. Okay. So that's why we got this to make sure once we cut a hole, we'll know for sure what's going on in the wall. Okay, so now we're going to start cutting. See what I'm saying about how an angle, the angle grinder, it works great, but this is old plaster, so it's going to kick all that stuff up, okay? So that's why you've got to be careful about that. Now what we want to do is we've got our, our square here, and so we can just pop that rascal out, okay? There's plaster there, and you can see... Here's what we got to deal with next is the wood. So now, you see that? That's empty. That's an empty cavity right there. I use my chisel to just kind of square out this area here so that we can put our tube in there and we can kind of move that around, okay? So, the one thing about our next step is these <coughs> lays are nailed here and here but when you go and cut them the vibration can sometimes jostle them apart so when I'm cutting I may have to use my pliers to actually steady these so that I can get a nice cut and with my sawzall, I want to make sure that I make nice sharp cuts down, down, up, up, okay? Because you don't want that blade to jiggle it and jiggle it uh, a loose and jiggle any plaster a loose. So we may do that here. We'll see. Okay. Okay, now this is a good example. Now those cuts I did, you go in there and you gotta do that real fast. And you want that wood to be hitting here because that's where the good cut is. And then you want to go like that, like that. Okay, those are the movements you want to make. Now, even though I made those good movements, 
you're going to see how this wiggles, okay? Because that saw kind of jiggled it loose. So what you want to do, because we need to get these pieces of wood out here, out of here so we can put this insulation up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to grab this slat with these pliers, okay? And that way I can steady it and just cut down and get rid of this wood, okay? Now when you do that, you don't have to cut through the whole thing because you can cut it, break it off, and then you've got your, uh, your hole there. And you can't do that with a drill because it won't work. <laughs> now maybe you can get some super bit, but the stuff us 99 percenters use <laughs> won't work. So this is how 99 percenters do it. So that's your, that's your wood, okay? I like dropping it in there because you can hear it go down and that way you know, you know, you're good. So I'm taking my plier. Now this one is a little different because normally you can go up. It's hard to do that. So I twist it a little bit so I can get that blade in there and cut that off. Okay? Okay. I'm going to stop this because we're at 11, 12 minutes. Okay.